the current fibromyalgia diagnostic criteria. You see on the left side of the body map, there are 19 sites on this body map, and people are asked to check all the sites they have pain. And you add up from 0 to 19 how many sites people have pain in. And this measure is called the widespread pain index, and it just gives you an extent of how widespread the pain is. And just the body map alone will help predict, for example, which individuals with low back pain or osteoarthritis respond to a drug like duloxetine that is working in the amplifier in the central nervous system. People are asked about central nervous system symptoms that are phenotypic markers of nosoplastic pain or fibromyalgia. They're asked about fatigue, memory problems, and sleep disturbances. Those are scored from 0, 1, 2, or 3 based on whether they're not their slight, moderate, or severe. And then people are asked about irritable bowel, depression, or headache, and they get one point each for those questions. So a total of 0 to 19 points based on how widespread the pain is on the body map a score from 0 to 9 points based on whether people have and how severe their fatigue, memory problems, and sleep disturbance are, and then a total of 3 points for just the presence or absence of irritable bowel, depression, or headache. This score from 0 to 31, if someone has a score of 13 or higher, they are said to be diagnosed with fibromyalgia. But one of the things that I think is really important to realize or understand is that all the data about nosoplastic pain or fibromyalgia suggests that this is never just present or absence. Different people have different degrees of this. And the term fibromyalgianist was coined by Fred Wolf many years ago to connote this. And he said that if you basically look at the degree of fibromyalgia that someone with osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis or lupus has, that's often a stronger predictor of how much pain or disability they have than are more objective measures of that disease, like a X-ray or a sedimentation rate or a C-reactor protein. And so what we see is that the higher degree of fibromyalgia, and this is really just saying the same, is that they have more central sensitization, more nosoplastic pain. And so the new criteria for fibromyalgia and nosoplastic pain look for a combination of more widespread pain comorbid sleep, memory, and fatigue issues, as well as irritable bowel, depression, or headache.